Life is like a marathon, a journey. You start, you study, you work, you work out, you chill, you charge, you recharge, you stay sharp, and do it again, again, and again. Because the more focused and energized you are, the better prepared you'll be. I am Mok Inren, and I believe that in life, preparation is everything. Get focused and energized with brands. Good morning, everyone. Now, that advertisement was shot in the USA. And I was training for the marathon. Do you know how long the marathon is? Okay, you all run 2.4 km, right? How many rounds is that on the track? Six. Oh, fantastic, huh? So the marathon is 42 kilometers. 42 kilometers. And that is 105 rounds, a standard 400 meter track. 105 rounds. So that was what I was training for, okay? All right, so why did I show this video? Now, it is by way of introduction, because I have three parts to my talk today, okay? First of all, it is my successes, secondly, my struggles, and finally, God's revelation to me through these struggles, through His Word. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you some, some feature journal of my life here. Oh, that's me, you know? Alright, I used to be a swimmer when I was in primary school. Yeah? So, yeah, that, that's, that's me. Uh, the one with plum one. Okay? Because in swimming, I mean, you know swimming, you need some fats uh, to be buoyant, right? So that's what I had, right? So I used to swim uh, the, the 200 meter butterfly events and the 1,500 meter freestyle events, okay? Subsequently, uh, when I went to secondary school at Raffles, I did cross country. Yeah, so that was the cross country, you know? I read this was in Third City, okay? We went in Third City, and we actually read the boys. So you guys, anybody run here? And there's nobody, all right? You guys run the point four, okay? And that was me in 2007. So that was the year I qualified for the Southeast Asian Games in a triathlon event. So I combined swimming, running, and I add on cycling. Okay? And that was a swim, bike, run event. And in this year, 2007, I won the gold medal in the triathlon event as a medical student. Now in 2011, I ran the national record for the 5,000 meters event on the track. That's 12 and a half rounds. Okay? And then in 2013, I went on to qualify in the Southeast Asian Games for a marathon event. And that was the first time ever that a Singaporean had won a gold medal. And this was in Myanmar in 2013. Now, throughout my journey, I had multiple sponsors. You know? Wow, even Air Asia sponsored me. You know? I take free flights around the world. Is that amazing? Alright, and then look at this. I was on the vending machines. Have you seen this? Alright. Is that a machine here? Alright, so that's me. I was on the vending machines for 100 plus machines. Amazing. Okay? And I was also on the cover pages of magazines. And I liked it, right? You need to follow with me on my internet. And then I was writing in the streets times almost every week, building up the running events, talking about running. You know, I was a key opinion leader about running. Way right, back in 2017. And right now I do sports surgery, right? And I try to operate on knees to help people get back in the sports. Okay, now, if you're following me, guys, most of you will think that I'm successful. Right? And that's what I do. When I talk to medical students about my story, and I do an anonymous poll, most of them will say that they think that I'm successful. I will not poll you guys, but I'm sure many of you guys want to be in my position. Isn't it? Good at studies, good in sports, a student athlete, it's not a term come in your mind. And many of you guys want to be in this position. Right? But, let me tell you guys a tragic story. A tragic story, okay? So in 2015, I wanted to take time off work to try to qualify for the 2016 Olympics, okay? And what did I do? You know, I had multiple press releases, 
Okay? To talk about my dreams to pursue the Olympics. I even got my university to give me $30,000. Right? $30,000 here to try to qualify for the Olympics. Okay? And I went to Boulder, USA. It's in Colorado. And why did I go there? It was 1.6 kilometers above sea level. Okay? So at altitude, that is a low oxygen concentration. Our body produces hormones to try to produce more red blood cells. And the strategy is this. I go high and I produce red blood cells, then I come low to raise. And then the extra oxygen carry capacity of the blood, I can run faster. So that was my strategy. Alright? So I, I went to the US, fantastic, you know. And who did I train with? Well, I trained with Lee Troop. He is a four times Olympian from Australia. Okay, he set up an older training club there, and we went, just ran eight sleep. How amazing is that? Huh? I wake up in the morning, you know, go for a run, one hour, come back to my breakfast, sleep in the afternoon, train again in the evening, and that is the routine. That's what the professional athletes do. They train eight and sleep because you need to rest to recover. Okay? So that's why I did full time for one year. Okay? And, and it was a great time, right? So think about it, guys. I have the time, I have the money, you know, and my dreams were really rich, isn't it? My dreams were really rich. No, but what happened was this, I suddenly had some knee pain. My right knee started hurting. There was no good reason, I did not fall down, I did not experience any trauma, but the pain just came on. And that was really the downside really. I, my, my stock market crashed in my whole life, my life crashed. Okay? Why is that so? Well, number one, you know, think about it, I I earned so much money, you know, in public phase, right? And I go and trade and I'm not qualified. And I just finally go to the corner and I you know, stop making the news. So there was a lot of shame there, right? Secondly, I was when people ask me, well, meeting friends ask me, oh, how's your running going? How's the next race? I got nothing to say. I really had nothing to say. Right? Because I couldn't run anymore. Now the worst thing is this, right? I was feeling a dark night. And what Pastor said about being in prison, I was really in prison. Do you know why? Because I had so many sponsors. I was an influencer of sorts, right? On Instagram, I have a new thing. Right? A 20 plus thousand people. And do you know why? When I cannot run, and that's it actually, I'm pretty away, right? So when I cannot run, right? I had to continue posting stuff, you know. I need to post, oh, this shoe is good, this drink is good. But actually, I'm not even running or drinking because of my injury. So I was really living a double life. On the surface, I look really fantastic, right? You open the social media, not you see running well, he's enjoying his life. But actually, deep down, I was crushed. I was really crushed. Now, have you ever been in that position? Right? Trying to put up a strong front, but inside, you are really struggling. And then that was me. But you could have described me as being depressed and lonely. Right? Depressed because suddenly, everything in my life hinged upon my ability to run well. It hinged upon the ability for me to run and win. But when this happened, my life crashed. Right? And I was lonely, right? Because I didn't want to tell people. I was fearful of what people think of me. Maybe my sponsors will stop supporting me, and so on. So it was a very difficult moment in my life. Now, you know, as a medical doctor, at that time I was still a young resident, what did I know? I, had, I knew I had to get my knees checked out, right? So we go, we, I went to do the, the most advanced scan that humans have, the magnetic resonance imaging scan. But it's an MRI scan. Now, lo and behold, there was nothing. Nothing structurally damaged in the knee. Okay? And not just on one scan, but on two scans. Just a double check, right? I know we scan one time, a few months just give me a scan one more time. But the pain was still there. And you know what I do? What would be a logical person do? You go and seek treatment, right? So I went to the top physiotherapist in Singapore that had to offer. Right? I went to a physio who also uh, pride himself as the one used physiotherapist. So I went to him, I got my knees But up, up to now, the pain still exists. I cannot run anymore. 
Okay? Now, so this is something that is uh, really shook my life up. Because my entire life simply crashed. Simply crashed. Okay? Now, what time do I go here? Let me see, yeah? Okay. Oh yeah, I want to tell you guys this. Do you know that it was such a struggle because oftentimes when I find myself struggling with something, maybe at work or so on, I may tell myself, say, oh Mark, don't worry, you are Singapore's top marathon. Or when I'm not doing well in my running, I may say, oh Mark, don't worry, you are training to be a surgeon. And it may be the same for you, right? Maybe you are not doing well in your grades, you may say, oh, no, I am actually good with my CCA. Oh, I'm a prefect. Or if you're not doing well in those spheres, you say, oh, my grades are not bad. Do you see? I saw myself catching myself up with these clusters. So running was a huge cluster for me because I'm the top in Singapore already, right? So it's a very, very powerful cluster. Anytime my life is not doing well, I face the cluster and I felt bad. But now, the biggest cluster in my life has disappeared because I couldn't run at all. Now, but thanks be to God, right? He saved me in 2018. Okay? He gave me new eyes to look at my situation. And here I want to show you four short verses in the book of Matthew. Now, the book of Matthew is one of the four Gospels that comprise of Luke, John, and Mark, right? And it's all about talking about the life of Jesus in this world. The life of Jesus in this world, right? So let's read these four verses together. This is Matthew 7.24 Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house, but it did not fall, because it has been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell. Great was the fall of it. Now, so let us ask some simple observations. Right? Simple observations from this text. Number one, let's look at the wise man. The wise man, what did he do? Well, he built his house on the road. Very straightforward, right? And what was the consequence of that? The rain fell, floods came, winds blew, but it did not fall. Simple, right? Now how about the other person, the foolish man? What did he do? He built his house on the sand. And what happened? The rain fell, the floods came, the winds blew, he fell. The rate was the fall of it. Very easy. Right? Now, who wants to be the foolish man? Anybody? Nobody. Oh, right? Fantastic. Now, who wants to be the wise man? Mr. Hank, who wants to be the wise man? Hey, nobody is old. Oh, one person, fantastic. Two, fantastic, right? At least a few people want to be wise, right? We cannot believe in this neutrality. You need to make a decision. When confronted with these verses, right? Okay, so let me confess a point. Do you know that my life was a picture of a foolish man? I was the foolish man that experienced the winds blowing, the rains coming, and the floods coming, and my life crashed, right? Because everything was hinged on my ability to run. What was my house built on? My house was built on my running performance. My house was built on my running accolades. My house was built on the praise of man that I received whenever I win something. That was my house, that was what my house was built on. And on the surface, my house looked fantastic. It looks like a you know a, a big bungalow, very big house, lots of stuff in the house. But when the house was built, was faced with the wind and the rains, it crashed. It crashed. Now, if you are listening to me, you must be very interested not to make the same mistake. Now, honestly, if you are not interested in that, then we have really wasted our time. We have wasted me speaking to you and wasted our time speaking there. Because this is a question that we must ask ourselves. 
how can I be the wise man? You must ask today, how can I not be the foolish man like Uncle Mok here? Alright, that's what the church children for me, Uncle Mok, okay? And how to be the wise man as described by Jesus? And we need to ask ourselves, what does Scripture say? Now, the key to question, this question is quite simple, right? We just need to compare the wise and the foolish man in this passage to see what is the difference. Okay, let's see. Well, it says here that the wise man hears Jesus' words. Right? That's one thing. But it's surprising that even the foolish man also hears Jesus' words. So there's no difference. Now, what does that mean today? It means that everyone can be going to church every week and listening to the sermon being preached. Everyone hears his words. There's a possibility that everyone is attending cell groups. Everyone is here. Is attending their youth groups. Both are listening to chapel services week in, week out. Both look totally the same on the surface. So what's different? According to Jesus, the wise man will do what Jesus says. But the foolish man does not. In essence, this means obedience. The wise obey, the foolish disobey. This is true on a daily basis. We can hear our parents but not obey. We can hear our teachers but not obey. And it is the same for our Lord Jesus Christ. We can hear God's words with one ear in and the other ear out and not obey. For the foolish who hear but disobey, the houses are built on the sand. And when the rain fall and the floods come and the winds blow, it will fall a great fall, as Jesus has warned. And that will be the consequence that we face. Right? Now, it is very important, however, not to misunderstand Jesus, right? In this parable, building our houses on sand refers to building our lives on anything in this world. It can be your grace, it can be your achievements, it can be your career, it can be even things like your family. Okay? But the Bible says it very clearly in the book of 1 John. It says, all this, all this will pass away. All this will pass away. At your dead days, there is no concern about how many medals you want or what grades you achieve. However, this does not mean that we should all quit school today, right? Or quit our jobs and just live an indulgent, carefree life. Neither does it mean that we cut down all pleasures and live in a monastery. These two extremes are not the desired response from us. Instead, what God wants us to do is to use these gifts that He has given us right, to glorify Him. He does not want us to focus on the gifts itself. He wants us to focus on the giver of these gifts, which is God Himself, and not make our identity in these gifts. Now, so God's question to me and an extension to you is what are we building our lives on today? Do we not only listen but also obey our Lord Jesus Christ? Where are you placing your identity? If I ask you who are you, what is the first thing that comes to mind? That is probably the thing that you are building your house on. Are you living for yourselves, for your own glory? For our own little kingdom. The good news today is this. Because of God's love for you and I, He sent His Son down, Jesus, and for 30 years He did not commit a single sin. And when He died on the cross, He pays for all the sins that I have done, past, present, and future. And this is going to be the same for all those who put the faith. Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when we believe in Him, we listen to Him and we obey Him, then we will start building our lives on the rock solid foundation that will last an eternity. That will last an eternity. In the words of Apostle Paul, Jesus Christ died for all. That those who live 
might no longer live for themselves, but for Jesus, who for their sake died and was raised. If we do not turn and respond to his grace, we will go on. We will go on to build our lives on sand. We will go on to do that. And honestly, no one will tell you to watch out. Only God's word will remind you that you are building your lives on sand. And one day, we will surely watch you fall. Or wash into the dream. If we do not build our lives on solid foundation. So let us ask ourselves tonight, what is our lives on? Is it on rock? Or is it on solid? Or is it on sand? Alright? Now, let me just put us in a word of prayer. Lord, you are good. I was running so far away, building my own house of sand, building my house with the praise that I got, with the prizes that I won, the sponsors that I had. Yet out of your mercy and grace, you have saved me from the floods and winds that are to come. I pray for all of those here today and all the teachers, we pray that you empower them to respond to your grace, to draw near to you as you draw near to them. Give thanks to you, Jesus' name. Pray. Amen.